A perfect example of what Dolly has going on when it comes to business can be found in the story of her hit song, I Will Always Love You, which none other than the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis Presley, once wanted to record. You had the moxie, not to mention the good business sense, to, for example, when you wrote um, I Will Always Love You, and Elvis Presley was going to record it, <laughs> and suddenly you said, whoa, no, tell me about that. Well, actually, Elvis loved the song. That was when he and Priscilla were having their problems, which I met her recently, and she told me that Elvis loved that song, and he had sung that to her on the day of their divorce. She, he said she, he kind of leaned in and sang a little bit of I Will Always Love You, wow. and so she told me how much that he loved that song, because this was recently we were ter doing some business. But during that time, it's no fault of Elvis, you know, he loved the song. But Tom Parker was in defense of Tom Parker, too. His Colonel agent. Tom, his manager, you know, he made some wise decisions, evidently. So he knew what he was doing. But that was goes back to that other thing, because Elvis was ready to record it. I told my friends and people that he was recording it, and they were in town to do the recording. They had invited me down to the session. And Colonel Tom Parker calls me the day before and says, now you do know that Elvis is recording your song, and you do know that Elvis don't record anything that he don't publish, or at least get half the publishing on. I said, really? Which is to say he would have the rights He would the have the rights, at least half, half of the, the rights to the publishing of the song. I said, I can't do that. This song's already been a hit with me, and this is in my publishing company, and obviously this is gonna be one of my most important copyrights, and I can't give you half the publishing. Of course, that's stuff that I'm leaving for my family. And uh, he said, well, then we can't record the song. And I was just heartbroken. I said, well, I'm really sorry, but I can't do that. But so I Parton, didn't. That took guts. Well, it didn't to me. It seemed to be the thing to do. I, it hurt me because I was so disappointed that I was going to have to tell my friends Elvis didn't record it. And, but I just knew that that was not right and that that was not, if it had been maybe, if I didn't have my own publishing company, had the song not already been a hit, it might have been different. But I couldn't give somebody half of a song that had already been number one and that was, you know, was evident, had already proved itself. Well, so, you had some redemption, Whitney Houston, then well, many yes. years later. <laughs> That's true. When Whitney recorded, I was like, oh, good, because now I own 100% of the publishing, 100% of the writing. And I did really well with that. But I didn't blame Elvis, and I didn't blame Colonel Tom I either. I, it was a decision I had to make at the time, and I'm glad I did. But when Whitney Houston recorded it, which made it a worldwide hit all over again, not only made you a lot of money, that's true, but also, as you yourself said, you said, hey, here it comes again. That really was a great song. My question is, Whitney Houston, uh, African-American heritage, you from the mountains of East Tennessee, what went through your mind when it was Whitney Houston who brought the song back and made it again such a sensational bestseller? Well, it was overwhelming. The way she did it, David Foster, who arranged and, and produced it, and Kevin Costner, who's the one that just, you know, wanted to do the song in, in the movie. But when I heard her sing it, because I'd always loved her singing anyway. I mean, what a voice she had. I mean, at that time, nobody could outsing her. But when I heard it, I, my heart just stopped. I just couldn't believe that my little song, my little simple song that was written straight from my heart, you know, about a, a subject uh, that we all know and relate to one way or another, whether it's someone that's died or our kids going off to school. People relate to that song in so many ways. But anyway, when I heard her sing it, I could not believe it. I almost, I was driving at that time from my office in Nashville to my house in Brentwood, and I heard it when she started singing that a cappella. I thought, well, it, you know, it just, I thought, what is, you know, if I should stay? And it, it took a minute to realize. And then when, when it went into the, with the music part where she said, and I, I honestly thought I was going to have a heart attack. It was one of the most overwhelming things. The way she did it was spectacular. And I could never have done it like that myself. But uh, it made me just think, well, I guess if you got a good song, it can be arranged and produced with, in almost any style. So, but that's when I realized that the song was really important because 
and to be done anyway. It was, it was overwhelming. People say, well, that's Whitney's song. I said, that's fine. You can give her the credit. I just want the cash. <laughs> so send that check on to me. But it was her song, the way that she did that to make that such a worldwide hit. Mine would have never have done that. But since then, people have done it you know, as instrumentals, as duets, and all of that. So it's just one of those simple little songs that says nothing and yet everything. It's very simple. Dolly Parton wrote, I Will Always Love You, in 1973 as a goodbye song to Porter Wagner when she decided to leave his show after co-hosting for seven years. 